the Iberian Peninsula, encompassing modern-day Spain and Portugal, has long been considered a crossroads between Europe and Africa, a land where cultures, languages, and peoples have intersected for millennia. Yet beneath the familiar historical narratives lies a far more intricate story, encoded not in texts or artifacts alone, but in the very DNA of its inhabitants. For centuries, historians and geneticists alike assumed that Iberians represented a relatively simple blend of Mediterranean populations. Recent advances in ancient DNA analysis and next-generation sequencing are now overturning that assumption revealing an unexpected depth of genetic diversity stretching back tens of thousands of years. From the first modern humans who took refuge in Iberia during the last glacial maximum, to the coastal hunter-gatherers of the Mesolithic, the pioneering Neolithic farmers, the steppe pastoralists of the Bronze Age, and the complex layering of Roman, Germanic, and North African ancestry, Iberian genetic history is a mosaic of migrations, survival, and adaptation. Each period left a measurable imprint, detectable in mitochondrial lineages, Y-chromosome haplogroups, and autosomal DNA. Today, these revelations compel us to rethink what it means to be Iberian. For this reason, we will embark on a chronological journey through time, tracing the surprising genetic origins of the peoples of this remarkable peninsula. The story of Iberian genetic origins begins nearly 40,000 years ago when the first Homo sapiens set foot on the peninsula. These early humans arrived during a period of profound environmental instability, as Europe was experiencing the fluctuating extremes of the Upper Paleolithic. Yet the rugged landscapes of Iberia, its mountainous interior, extensive river valleys, and temperate coastal zones, provided refuge from the harshest conditions of the last glacial maximum, roughly between 26,500 and 19,000 years ago. Geneticists refer to such regions as refugia, and Iberia's role was pivotal. It acted as a sanctuary where human populations could survive, persist, and eventually repopulate the continent as the ice retreated. Ancient DNA extracted from skeletal remains reveals that the mitochondrial lineages of these Paleolithic Iberians were dominated by haplogroups H, U5, and V, lineages that are also prominent among Western European hunter-gatherers. Autosomal genetic studies reinforce this pattern, showing that Iberians were more closely related to hunter-gatherers of present-day France and Germany's western regions than to their central European counterparts, who exhibited distinct genetic signatures. In fact, analyses indicate that approximately 70 to 80 percent of Iberian Paleolithic mtDNA lineages can be traced directly to these western European hunter-gatherer populations reflecting both continuity and relative isolation. This early genetic foundation not only shaped the survival strategies of Iberians during millennia of climatic upheaval, but also established the core ancestral makeup upon which subsequent waves of migration, Neolithic farmers, Bronze Age steppe pastoralists, and later Mediterranean and North African groups would build. By understanding these earliest inhabitants, we gain insight into the remarkable resilience and adaptability of human populations in Iberia, setting the stage for the complex genetic mosaic that would define the peninsula for millennia to come. Following the dramatic environmental shifts at the end of the last glacial maximum, Iberia entered the Mesolithic period, roughly between 10,000 and 5,500 BCE. Populations of post-Ice Age hunter-gatherers adapted to increasingly stable climates, exploiting both inland and coastal environments. Archaeological sites along the Atlantic and Mediterranean coasts reveal sophisticated subsistence strategies, while stable isotope analyses of human remains indicate diets that were remarkably diverse. Combining marine protein from fish and shellfish with terrestrial resources such as deer, wild boar, and plant-based foods. These data also suggest seasonal mobility, with groups moving between river valleys, highlands, and coastal zones to optimize access to resources. Genetically, the Mesolithic Iberians largely maintained the hunter-gatherer lineages established in the Paleolithic, particularly mitochondrial haplogroups U5, H, and V, highlighting remarkable continuity over thousands of years. Yet the genetic record also reveals subtle, but significant influxes from outside populations. Small amounts of ancestry, roughly 5 to 10%, can be traced to populations from the Levant and Maghreb, 
suggesting sporadic contact across the Mediterranean and with North Africa, likely facilitated by coastal navigation or trade networks. This period marks the first detectable layering of genetic diversity in Iberia, signaling that even in relatively isolated refugia, human populations were not entirely static. These early admixture events foreshadow the more dramatic transformations that would follow in the Neolithic, when farming communities would arrive from Anatolia. In the Mesolithic, however, the Iberian Peninsula remained primarily shaped by the enduring legacies of its hunter-gatherer ancestors, whose adaptive strategies, mobility patterns, and genetic continuity provided the foundation upon which subsequent migratory waves would build a more complex and cosmopolitan genetic landscape. Around 5500 BCE, the Iberian Peninsula experienced one of its most transformative demographic events, the arrival of Anatolian farmers. These early agriculturalists introduced domesticated plants and animals, sedentary lifestyles, and new material cultures, including pottery and megalithic structures, fundamentally reshaping Iberian society. Archaeological evidence indicates a rapid spread of farming communities from the eastern Mediterranean along both coastal and riverine corridors. Yet the genetic imprint of these newcomers varied significantly across the peninsula. Ancient DNA analyses reveal that the Neolithic populations carried mitochondrial lineages such as N1A, T2, and J, which were largely absent in the preceding Mesolithic hunter-gatherers. Autosomal DNA studies show that Iberian Neolithic genomes were the product of roughly 60 to 70 percent admixture with local hunter-gatherer populations, reflecting a gradual integration rather than outright replacement. This admixture created a genetically mosaic population, blending the resilience and local knowledge of indigenous groups with the innovations of Anatolian farmers. Regional patterns are striking. Southern Iberia, particularly along the Guadalquivir and Mediterranean coasts, exhibits higher proportions of farmer ancestry, often exceeding 65%, while northern and mountainous regions retain stronger signatures of hunter-gatherer lineages. These differences likely reflect both geographic barriers and the slower pace of cultural assimilation in less accessible areas. Over approximately 1,500 years, the agricultural revolution transformed not only subsistence strategies, but also population structure. Settled communities allowed for increased population density, permanent dwellings, and technological innovations, which left measurable genetic and archaeological legacies. This period marks the first major wave of non-native ancestry in Iberia and establishes a foundation for subsequent demographic shifts, including the influx of Bronze Age steppe pastoralists. The Neolithic Revolution demonstrates that the Iberian genetic landscape is not a static record of isolation, but a dynamic interplay of migration, admixture, and adaptation, an interplay that would continue to define the peninsula for millennia to come. The Iberian Peninsula entered the Bronze Age around 2200 BCE, a period marked by profound social, cultural, and genetic transformations. This era coincides with the arrival of steppe pastoralists from Eastern Europe, whose migrations profoundly reshaped the genetic landscape of Iberia. Ancient DNA studies reveal the introduction of Y-chromosome haplogroup R1BM269, which today dominates male lineages across much of Western Europe, including Iberia accounting for roughly 60 to 70 percent of male ancestry in some regions. Autosomal DNA analyses indicate that steppe ancestry contributed approximately 30 to 40 percent to the Iberian Bronze A gene pool, representing a major influx atop the existing Mesolithic and Neolithic populations. Archaeologically, the Bronze Age is characterized by the proliferation of fortified settlements, extensive metalworking, and changes in burial practices, including individual inhumations with grave goods, cultural markers often associated with steppe-descended populations. Interestingly, the genetic impact of these migrations was not uniform. Atlantic Iberia shows higher retention of local hunter-gatherer and Neolithic farmer ancestry, while eastern and central regions display stronger steppe influence reflecting both migration routes and the geographic accessibility of steppe-descended groups. This period also laid the foundations for the spread of Indo-European languages in Iberia. While the precise mechanisms remain debated, 
the correlation between steppe ancestry and the arrival of early Celtic dialects suggests a demographic component to linguistic change. Beyond genetics, the Bronze Age witnessed technological and societal innovations, including bronze metallurgy, trade networks extending across the Mediterranean, and increased social stratification. In sum, the Bronze Age represents a turning point in Iberian prehistory, a complex overlay of steppe, Neolithic farmer, and hunter-gatherer ancestry created the mosaic that would persist into the Iron Age. It exemplifies how migration, technology, and cultural exchange intertwined to produce both genetic and societal transformations, demonstrating that Iberia was far from a passive recipient of population movements. It was an active stage for innovation and integration. The Iron Age in Iberia, spanning roughly 1000 to 200 BCE, was a period of intense cultural interaction and genetic complexity. Coastal regions, particularly in the east and south, experienced sustained contact with Mediterranean civilizations, including the Phoenicians and Carthaginians. Archaeogenetic studies indicate that these interactions left a measurable imprint on the Iberian gene pool. North African ancestry contributes approximately 5 to 10 percent in some southern populations, reflecting trade, colonization, and occasional intermarriage rather than mass migration. Greek colonies, established along the eastern coast, provide another layer of influence, though their genetic contribution appears minimal. While Hellenic culture, pottery, coinage, and urban planning was adopted, DNA analyses show that Greek ancestry rarely exceeded 1 to 2 percent, suggesting a predominantly cultural rather than demographic impact. Despite these external influences, the underlying genetic structure of Iberians demonstrates remarkable continuity from the Bronze Age. Hunter-gatherer, Neolithic farmer, and steppe-derived lineages persisted, creating a resilient foundation upon which these new interactions were layered. This continuity is particularly evident in autosomal DNA patterns, which indicate that local populations largely absorb newcomers rather than being replaced. Iron Age Iberians thus emerge as a highly mosaic population, combining indigenous, steppe, and limited North African contributions with cultural influences from the Eastern Mediterranean. Isotopic analyses of diet and mobility further reveal ongoing regional diversity. Coastal populations exploited maritime resources and participated in Mediterranean trade networks, while inland communities maintained subsistence strategies rooted in earlier agricultural and pastoral practices. Collectively, the Iron Age illustrates that Iberian identity was neither monolithic nor static. Instead, it reflects dynamic interactions between local continuity and selective external admixture, producing a genetically and culturally rich population that would serve as the substrate for the major demographic events of the Roman and medieval periods. The mosaic nature of these populations challenges traditional narratives of linear ancestry emphasizing Iberia as a crossroads of both genes and cultures. The Roman period, beginning in the 2nd century BCE, introduced profound social and cultural transformations across the Iberian Peninsula, yet its genetic impact was relatively modest compared to earlier migrations. Roman urbanization, trade, and military settlements facilitated population mixing, particularly in major cities such as Taraco and Emerita Augusta. Ancient DNA evidence suggests that while some gene flow from Italy and other Roman provinces occurred, it rarely exceeded a few percent, indicating that the indigenous Iberian gene pool remained largely intact. Following the collapse of Roman authority, Germanic migrations between the 5th and 8th century CE, primarily Visigoths, Swabi, and Vandals, introduced detectable Y-DNA lineages accounting for roughly 5 to 10 percent of male ancestry in certain regions, especially in the north and along former Visigothic strongholds. These contributions, while numerically modest, are significant in tracing paternal lineages and social hierarchies established during early medieval Iberia. The Islamic conquest, beginning in 711 CE and persisting until 1492 CE in southern Iberia, represents the most substantial post-Roman demographic event. Genomic studies reveal the introduction of North African and Middle Eastern ancestry, which today contributes approximately 10 to 15 percent of the Southern Iberian gene pool. This admixture is highly regionalized, 
with coastal Andalusia exhibiting the highest levels, while northern and interior regions remain predominantly of earlier European ancestry. Synthesizing these layers, modern Iberians are a mosaic of deep and recent ancestries, roughly 40 to 50 percent Neolithic farmer, 20 to 30 percent steppe, 10 to 15 percent North African, with the remainder comprising Mesolithic hunter-gatherers and minor inputs from Roman and Germanic lineages. The peninsula's genetic landscape reflects millennia of integration, adaptation, and selective migration, producing a population whose diversity mirrors both its complex history and its pivotal geographic position between Europe and Africa. Through this lens, Iberians today are living archives, carrying the imprints of prehistoric migrations, ancient civilizations, and medieval transformations within their very DNA. The genetic history of the Iberian Peninsula reveals a story far richer and more intricate than previously imagined. From the first Paleolithic hunter-gatherers who found refuge during the last glacial maximum, to the Anatolian farmers of the Neolithic, the steppe pastoralists of the Bronze Age, and the layered influences of Mediterranean, North African, and medieval migrations, Iberians are a complex genetic mosaic. Each wave of migration was not merely a replacement, but an integration, producing a population shaped as much by adaptation and continuity as by external input. Modern genomic studies, leveraging ancient DNA and next-generation sequencing, have challenged simplistic historical narratives. Iberians are no longer viewed as a homogeneous Mediterranean population, but as a dynamic amalgam of ancestries spanning tens of thousands of years. These findings underscore the interplay between migration, environmental pressures, and cultural exchange in shaping both genes and societies. Yet many questions remain. Large portions of western Portugal inland regions and peripheral mountain zones remain underrepresented in genetic sampling. Future ancient DNA research in these areas could further refine timelines, clarify regional variation, and illuminate subtle episodes of admixture previously undetected. Ultimately, the story of Iberians is not a single lineage, but a tapestry woven from millennia of movement, survival, and adaptation. It reminds us that identity, whether genetic, cultural, or social, is rarely linear or simple. Instead, it is a layered interconnected narrative, one that reflects the complexity of human history and the remarkable resilience of populations navigating changing landscapes and diverse interactions across millennia.